Hi everyone, Darren here, and we've got another Mini in the garage. This time, a uh, late 80s green pre-sportsback era car. This one traveled all the way from Nebraska, and uh, it's pretty much a standard car. Standard interior. Got some fancy gauges, but uh, the owner Jay is having some troubles, and he hauled it eight hours to get to my house. So let's uh, let's see what's going on with this car, and um, I'll let you guys know what I find. All right, this is a uh, Jay's car. This is Jay. Hi. And uh, Jay's come all the way out from Nebraska here, and uh, his car is having some troubles. So I'm gonna have Jay kind of explain his car and. Uh, tell me what's going on. All right, so early or middle January, I got went down to Texas. I got this car. My brother shipped it back over. Um, initially, got it home, put a new battery in it, fired right up. Uh, I drove it around town just a little bit. Uh, drove well. I took it on a little bit longer trips, a couple of them, about 70 miles round trip. And then I started getting these uh, high revs and low revs at idle, and then it. Since then, it's kind of been a mystery. It's just kind of been real temperamental as far as starting and running well. So I'm not really sure what the whole deal is. So I got on one of the mini forums on Facebook and somebody threw your name out. And then shortly after you messaged me directly. So i uh, been talking to you for probably the last month or so. Right. And so uh, I finally just was like, we just need to get it out here and let you do your magic on it. So, right. Yeah, we uh, we did we did connect through uh, through Facebook and then Messenger. We've been chatting. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to solve your problems here relatively quickly. Uh, we did discuss doing a replacement carburetor, yep. and I do have one of AC's uh, nicely rebuilt carbs, which I'll show later. And we'll we'll go through the ignition system, see what's see what's going on with that, and hopefully, we'll get you back running nice and smooth like they should. Yes. Yeah. I, like I said, first drive, it was all smiles. I was happy, and then it was just kind of a lot of scratch in my head, and so I just wanted to get back to the reliability, consistency, I want to drive it daily, and just have fun with it, so that's awesome. I want to well, get back to. <laughs> hopefully I can get you back there and uh, you'll be back on the road in no time. Hopefully. So here we are under the bonnet, and as I mentioned earlier, Jay and I have decided we are going to swap out this carb so that he starts his ownership of this car with a freshly rebuilt AC Dodd carb. So I went ahead and started the process of removing this carb. And one thing I noticed is that, like the previous car, no one had set up this choke properly. So you'll notice that it doesn't even touch the throttle stop at all. Just terrible. Well, we've started on the tune already. I switched carburetors last night. And this morning we came out and swapped out spark plugs. These are the BP-6 ES, gapped at 35. New power spark wires. The old wires were at 6,000 ohms per foot. And the new coil, the old coil seemed to have issues struggling to keep Lambda-1 at idle. So we swapped that out for a standard uh, 0.8 ohm coil. And then interestingly enough, this 65D seems to have a good uh, timing curve and the vacuum module is working as well. So we went ahead and left this alone because it was working as, as needed. And new vacuum lines to make all that stuff work. So I think we're well on our way to, uh, to getting the uh, needle profile sorted out. Now it does have a BDL needle in, in here. And initially it seemed okay, but it might get too rich above four. So I need to do some, some rev tests to see. Uh, what's going on with that and maybe do a, a change to a slightly neater needle. But so far so good. Well we ended up sticking with the uh, standard BDL and ultimately I had to switch to 3-in-1 dash mode oil but this thing sounds pretty good now. So I'm gonna let Jay go out for a test drive and see what he thinks. Hesitations, no up and down through accelerations or anything. Um, come to a stop, stayed right at a thousand the whole time. So that was fun. The hills were a little tricky for me to, because I'm not used to. I had to gear down a few times to go up, but um, now I got on an open stretch and 
hit fourth and hammered down, and she just ate the whole time. So, and out of the cruise, you, yeah. you get on the highway, do you like 60, 60? I didn't go up on the on the cruise, okay. no. But just I opened, I got it up to about sixty five, and I was at about thirty five hundred RPMs somewhere around. And there. It just cruised, yeah, nicely. just cruised nicely. Sweet. So, All right. yeah, no, that was nice and. Yeah, even like staying at 35, just humming around on some of these roads, like there wasn't any up or down or anything like that. RPM gauge just stuck. Every time I'd get to a speed, just stuck. So, no more up and downs on those weird. You know, no, no. Nope. Yeah. And when I come to a stop, I mean, I know the engine's warm, and so the issue I was having was rev high, come down low, rev back up, and it didn't do any of that. Just hit 1,000 and just. Stay there. So it's more drivable. Oh yes, yes very much so. Nice. <laughs> so I'm hoping it when I go back that it's similar, if not a little bit better, since we're gonna add a little bit of oxygen, you know, coming down a little bit. So cool. Yeah, no. It, so what did you think of the tuning process, like in general? It's very interesting. I didn't realize there was so much to it, mm -hmm. but yes, it was. You know, I can really appreciate the fineness to it. So. I guess that's what I'm looking for. Finesse. So, no. Not that. I would, definitely would not have been able to do that on my own. So, Well, that's why I reached out to you. I was like, hey, you know, I know what's going on. I know how to get these tuned. Come on yeah. out and see me. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm very happy that I did.